Hi, I'm Reverend Liliana Barzola, and I want to teach you how to make an altar. So I think about my altar the way most people think of a vision board. I put everything on my altar that gives me that good feeling, that good juju, all the things I love. I really love that hearth fire feeling with flames and candles, and I don't have a fireplace, so it makes me really sad. So I'm going to teach you a wonderful and simple trick, a way to create that hearth fire feeling super easy and very inexpensive. So I take a bowl, something that can handle the heat, metal, glass that's tempered, cheap box of kosher salt, put them together, and then you get this beautiful, yummy, snow white appeal. And you're gonna take candles, tea lights, place them in here. You can do a bunch of them. So this has, Number one, the property of being beautiful. And the other thing is you get the salt heated and salt is a wonderful clearing mineral. It's space clears for you. When you heat that salt up, it's just gonna start to clear the air, clear the space that you're in. And then, so this is a version of an altar that I love in the autumn when you want that hearth fire feeling. And I love tea lights. I think they're the way to go. Rather than taking a lighter and having to keep lighting all your incense, if you just have that candle going, you can keep coming back, dipping back. So some people love sweet grass. I love the loose leaf uh, white sage. And I take just a single leaf, it doesn't take much, get that going, and you can start to clear the space. And then you got the salt right there. So you can just dip that in the salt when you're done with it. But my very favorite is Palo Santo. And Palo Santo is saint's wood. It comes from South America, and it's so sweet smelling. So the sage is fantastic for clearing a space because I think we get obsessed with clearing and clearing and clearing, but then you need to build the chi back up. So when you meditate, you sit and meditate, hopefully in front of your altar, that first moment is just clearing, kind of feeling all the yucky stuff in your space and clearing it out. Then you begin to build the chi. So that's when the meditation gets really good and you feel fantastic because you're building that energy. The other thing you can do is take a piece of non-toxic charcoal. They come in little squares. And you can put some frankincense right on there. That's also another way to build the chi. So I think frankincense, like Palo Santo, adds to the space. And it just is another delicious, sweet-smelling option. My partner, Bree, calls these tchotchkes, but I think of them as just wonderful additions to my altar. <laughs> so all those l yummy little things that you've been holding on to, that you've been, you know, having sitting on your shelf, you can add those to your altar. Sometimes you feel like you don't have a place to grieve. Maybe you don't have a place to meditate. Maybe you don't have a place to call in wonderful spiritual yumminess. Maybe you don't have a place of your own. Having a little corner, a special corner of your room or even of your office or even of the corner of your desk that's altar-like, where there's intention. So when you have an altar, it's a way to set intention. It's a meeting place for you and divine spirit. It's a place that can hold the chi for you. So I love to sit in front of my altar, light that candle, look at my tchotchkes, look at my meaningful little symbols and meditate on those things. Oh. When I'm in a dark place and I feel like I have no energy left in me, let's say I need to manifest something for myself, a job, a sweetie pie, money, a new opportunity. What? A sweetie pie? Well, not me, but like them. <laughs> yeah. If you're still doubting whether or not you need an altar, Think about those down in the dumps, dark times where you just have no energy and you really need to pick me up. That's what an altar can do for you. You light that candle and sometimes the candle has the energy that you don't have. So there has been many low points in my life where I have needed to manifest something quickly. One time I didn't have an office space and I needed to like a place to see my clients in three days and I was like, holy shit, what am I going to do? And you know what? I lit my candle because I was like, I'm out of ideas. I don't know what to do. And the second I lit that candle with that intention, I just relaxed. I meditated. I let the candle hold the intention for me. And sure enough, I got an email from someone in 10 minutes that was like, hey, do you want to rent space for me? I was like, I sure do. So when you're tired, when you're exhausted and you have nothing left, that's when you want to go to your altar. It's also a place to commune with your, your loved ones that have passed over. Liliana and 
Gabriella. Here to talk to you about how to make your own altar. What do you want to tell people about making their own altars? You add the salt, you add the candles, and you add stuff like the uh, Palo Santo. Palo Santo. Salt. And Ella, why don't you show them some things you would put in your altar? Hold it up to the camera while I get the tea light. Um, if you find a feather, you might want to put that in there. You can add a little glass charm. And what do we put it in here, Ella? Salt. That's right. We fill it with salt. And tell them why we use salt. So that if the candle is knocked over, then it just goes out. Right, it's super safe. You can put lots of candles in here and it creates this beautiful, yummy effect. Aww. Ella's putting some things in the altar. She's got a feather, she's got a turtle. You got St. Michael, Let's stick him in there. Whoa, that's your hand, baby. Yay, so this is just the beginning of building a hearth fire. You can take a nice big candle and stick it right in the center and then put candles around it. And it's a really fun thing to do for your whole family. Some people like to burn sweet grass. Can you make a mustache? Mm -hmm. Or sage. And we like the loose sage because we like to just burn the little leaves. Ella, do you want to burn a leaf and show everyone what it's like? <laughs> <laughs> so we love to burn a little leaf because for me, Sage is clearing. It clears the space. Mm -hmm. And then when we're done with it, what do we do, Ella? We stick it in the salt. That's right. Go for it. Mm -hmm. You want to show them how to light the Palo Santo? One, two, three. And then when you get the fire going, it smells kind of sweet. What do you think the Palo Santo smells like? Tree sap. All right, <laughs> well, my favorite is Palo Santo because it's got a sweet smell to it and it really warms up the space. That's my favorite. Palo Santo Saints Wood. I would say when you're buying Palo Santo, really go to a place, find it at your local crystal store or new age store and smell it and make sure it is legit, not just kindling, but it actually smells sweet, like real Palo Santo. And you'll know right away. If it's just boring smelling, it is not the right one. And so, for me, the altar is a special place to come and talk to our ancestors. What about you, Ella? What do you love about the altar? Everything. All right. That says it all. Thanks so much for watching. Have fun creating your own altar. Bye. <laughs>